Hello, my name's Jane and welcome to my channel, Explaining Biology Clearly. It's just me, my whiteboard and my pen. Today I'm going to talk to you about mitochondria, their structure and their function and where they're found. So mitochondria is a plural word, so it refers to lots of them. If you're referring only to one, um, then you would refer to a mitochondrion. So that's a singular word, mitochondrion. So I've drawn a mitochondrion down here in that, that sausage-shaped picture in the middle. So mitochondria are found in eukaryotic cells only, cells with a true nucleus. Now I've got a video on animal and plant cells where I talk about the structure of these further, but only in plants, fungi, animals and protactista do you find these mitochondria. They are known as membrane-bound organelles because they've got a membrane around the outside. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you don't find these in prokaryotic cells, which have no membrane-bound organelles. Um, mitochondria are the site of respiration. So that's where respiration takes place in these mitochondria. Their respiration is something which happens in all living things, even bacteria. Now that's strange because we said bacteria don't have mitochondria, but bacteria have the enzymes that can carry out respiration. See my video on prokaryotic cells to find out more about that. So respiration is where glucose is broken down to produce something called ATP. So respiration is the site of ATP production. ATP is a really important chemical that has got energy trapped in its bonds. So in respiration, the energy in glucose, in the bonds in glucose, is transferred into the energy in the bonds in ATP. Later, after respiration, ATP can be broken down to release that energy that's in the bonds, and, and that energy can then be used to empower other cell reactions. Um, so the production of ATP takes place in mitochondria. So if we have a little look at its structure now, actually before I do that let me just see why, show you why I've done two pictures. So mitochondria can appear as a sausage if it is a longitudinal section. So if the sausage has been cut all the way along the middle, as in this um, arrow here and you're looking down on it this is an eye <laughs> um, you're looking down then you're going to see this sausage shape if however you see a circle it's not because the mitochondria is a ball shape it's because we've got a cross section so you've cut through like in this direction and you're looking in this direction where this eye here is coming from. So you're seeing a circle, a cross section. Most commonly you'll see a longitudinal section like this. The outside is the outer membrane of the mitochondria and then inside is this wibbly wobbly folded membrane and that's the inner membrane. Wherever you've got a folded membrane, that has increased the surface area. So the inner membrane has a quite a large surface area because of that infolding. One of these folds is referred to as a crista. And for those of you doing higher level biology, the crista is the site of the electron transport chain in respiration. The gap between the inner and the outer membrane is the inner membrane space. The inner membrane space. And the main part of the mitochondria, which I'm just going to highlight this part here, most of the space, is taken up by, a, again, a jelly-like substance like the cytoplasm, but it's the matrix, the matrix. And for those of you, again, who are doing high-level biology, that is the site of the Krebs cycle in respiration. 
Now, strangely, in the mitochondria matrix, mitochondrial matrix, you will also find ribosomes. Ribosomes and also circular loops of DNA. And these are only found, um, circular loops of DNA are only found in prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells also have ribosomes because they're non-membrane bound ribosomes in their cytoplasm as well and this is thought to be because mitochondria evolved by a process called endosymbiosis. I'll put on another video to describe that later but basically mitochondria were are thought to have once been bacteria. <clears throat> So the size of mitochondria vary um, depending on the size, but they are somewhere between 0.5 and 1 micrometer. So smaller than a nucleus or a chloroplast, but larger than vesicles or ribosomes. And the numbers that you find, the number of mitochondria that you find vary depending on the type of cell and its function. So muscle cells, for example, um, will contain lots because they contract and require a lot of ATP for the energy to do that. Um, and also liver is another example. Liver cells produce a lot of protein and require a lot of ATP for that. So we'll have a lot of mitochondria. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and come back to my channel to have a look at more videos on this theme. Thank you very much.